My Qigong teacher in Beijing, he's a Taoist and a Buddhist also. Uh, those aren't uh, opposing paradigms. They actually nest together and I'll show um, after lunch um, uh, how, where we see those interwoven um, in our tradition, which is kind of nice. Sometimes we feel like we have to choose. Am I a Taoist because I'm a practitioner of Chinese medicine or my yogi because that's really I you know uh, have adopted uh, yogic methods or my Buddhist because I'm you know a meditator and I follow those traditions they actually are um, almost like what's well, interesting that they have so much in common so I think they're kind of part of the same heart but they express they showed up in different cultures at different times different places, um, but they have so much in common, so much overlapping. And then they have their own gifts, their own essential qualities that is unique to their own. I, I taught a class on Wednesday um, about Chinese medicine and the psyche and emotions and um, spirit. And one of the students after class said, God, I had no idea what this class was going to be about. Because the name of the class was, Don't Let Your Patients Drive You Crazy. Mm. Right? And she said, I thought it was a class to learn how, not how to let your patients <laughs> drive you crazy. And, um, but there was like a paragraph underneath that said, oh, this will really discuss the, the emotional, spiritual, and tradition of psychiatry according to Chinese medicine. Um, but I guess she didn't read that part, and so she's like, I thought I was going to learn that, but you know, I'm glad I learned, you know, what we did, which was, uh, so I'm wondering if um, you're planning on, what you're planning on today, were you all planning to come and maybe do some yoga, learn a little bit, so go through some movement, mm -hmm. everybody kind of was, mm -hmm. good. All right, now this is, doesn't mean that you're going to have to have done yoga before, <laughs> And yoga isn't uh, about flexibility. It's not an exercise particularly, although exercise or movement is part of this technology. Yoga means to yoke. That's the, 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 the English word and the Sanskrit word have a common uh, root. Um, and so that's why the words sound alike, yoga and yoke. And yoke is where what you use to put two things together. Mm -hmm. Where you put two things together is we say they're yoked. Oh. It's usually like a, a horse and a cart, and the thing that combines the two is called the yoke, mm -hmm. like that. So that's what the implication of, of yoga is, is a coming together. And then there's all the different ways. So if you have yoga in the center, almost like a jewel. And you know how a jewel, if the light hits it, it has all these different facets that come off of it? <clears throat> there's all these different ways that we can enter into that feeling of coming together. And one is by putting our body in certain shapes. <laughs> we call that, that's a kind of yoga, where we put our body in shapes. And that helps to bring our body, meridians, mind, body, brings that together. They're all different. That jewel has all these different ways that are you're able to reach yoga. One way to reach yoga is by chanting. That's an old, very old tradition of trying to reach kind of like a trance-like state by repetition of a meaningful word or name. They call that japa yoga, or mantra, mm -hmm. repeating the name. Usually the name of uh, God, one of the names of God. Um, so that's what yoga means. Anything we do, any kind of practice that brings us more together. And so in a certain way, when we are practicing Chinese medicine, whether we're doing massage on someone, or we are giving them herbal medicine, or if we're giving them acupuncture, in a sense that we're helping them to reach yoga. We're helping them to become more integrated. So that's also what we do from 
that technology from the Chinese medicine technology we're bringing people together helping them to reach more of a holistic state.